You're not being fair to your father if you don't give me an explanation to take back to him. He went to some expense to have me make this trip. Have gun. Will travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Well, Emily. Well, here you are, Mr. Paladin. Uh, thank you, Alex. Don't you be wanting me again today, sir? No, I'm spending the rest of the day up in my room. I have a long, hard trip ahead of me tomorrow. Uh, for your trouble, Alex. Oh, thank you, sir. Lammy, my pleasure. <laughs> Good day, sir. Good day, Alex. <sighs> oh, Mr. Paladin. Oh, hey, boy. I was meeting with Mr. What's his name? Mr. Countryman. Yes, sir. Well, hey, boy, he has his troubles. He's hired me to go up to Vallejo to escort his daughter back to San Francisco. Oh, why she need escort? He got a letter from the sheriff saying that somebody is threatening her life, and the sheriff says he won't be responsible, thinks she ought to come home. But she's a school teacher up there, and she doesn't want to come home, so Mr. Countryman wants me to go get her. You'll leave tonight? No, tomorrow, first thing. Uh, would you make sure there's a horse ready for me at the livery stable in the morning? Yes, sir. I'll be up in my room. I'm going to finish that book I was reading and get to bed early. Uh, no visitors, hey, boy. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Paladin, uh, the colonel is still in your room. The what? Yes, sir. He have many drinks of brandy and just sit there staring at chessboard. <laughs> we finished that game before I went out. Oh, he say he find way out of checkmate. He wait till you come back. He, he's plenty tipsy by now. Oh, no. Hey, boy, go tell him uh, tell him that I was detained, that I, I won't be back tonight. Let me know when he's gone. I'll be over in the bar. Oh, yes, sir. So, oh, uh, Mr. Paladin. Yes? Uh, also, while you are a very pretty young lady ask for you, uh, she says she wait in bar till you return. He lady from room 401. Kadugga, dugga, dug. Four, oh, ooh, 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 that lady. Mm. Well, it doesn't look like I'll finish reading that book tonight, does it? Hey, oh, boy? no, sir. But uh, life in Carlton Hotel, much more fun than life in books, maybe so. <laughs> hey, boy, you could be right. started my journey under the hire of Mr. Countryman. It was afternoon when I rode into the peaceful town of Vallejo, perched on an arrowhead of land piercing the Napa River where it flows into San Pablo Bay. When I signed the register at the only hotel, the clerk told me I could find Miss Lena Countryman at the schoolhouse, three miles away, just off the north road on the banks of the river. By the time I arrived, she was waving goodbye to her pupil. Ooh, ooh. Goodbye, Johnny. Goodbye, dear. Home, you uh, Miss Countryman? Yes? My name is Paladin. If you're one of the sheriff's men, my answer is uh, still the same. I won't leave Vallejo. No, no, your father sent me. My father? But how do he you... He wants me to see that you get back to San Francisco safely. Oh, no. How in heaven's name did he find out? The sheriff wrote him. Is he upset? Yes, very much so. But he doesn't know why your life has been threatened. I suppose I should have written him. It would have been better coming from me. Who is threatening you, Miss Countryman? The people of Vallejo have it in their minds. Some say they've heard it for sure. That Dutch Talbot is on his way to take my life. Dutch Talbot? Yes. The outlaw? Yes. A wanted man with a big price on his head, so I've heard. Hmm. Why do they say this? It's a long story, Mr. Paladin, and I don't care to discuss it. Besides, there's no need to take up your time. I must be getting home. Uh, what about your father? Tell him I'm all right, as you can see. Tell him that I'll write and explain. Good afternoon. Uh, Miss Countryman. Yes? May I see you home? 
thank you, but I have my buggy. It's out back. I'd like to ride with you, Miss Countryman. We could talk on the way. You're not being fair to your father if you don't give me an explanation to take back to him. He went to some expense to have me make this trip. Oh, yes. Forgive me, Mr. Paladin. I've been rude to you. Not at all, ma'am. Oh, but I have. You're a gentleman, and I didn't perceive it at first. Your host and gun are misleading. But you're right. I should give you an explanation. I'll hitch up the buggy. Thank you. I'll be ready to leave in a few minutes. I don't usually take the north road, Mr. Paladin. There's a wagon trail along the river that's much shorter. You can turn right just up ahead. All right. How long have you lived in Vallejo? This is my third year. I came here after I finished school in San Francisco. It's a lovely place. I hope I'll always be here. It offers everything I want or ever will want. <laughs> you speak so finely for someone so young. Perhaps. But I'm fortunate enough to know what I want and appreciate it when I have it. There's an unending stimulation in guiding children and watching them mature. I couldn't be anything more satisfying, whether you're young or old. You can turn here. All right. Well, you're a dedicated woman, Miss Countryman. But why would Dutch Talbot or anyone else want to take your life? Why, if he does, it's because he probably thinks I'm responsible for his son's death. I didn't know he had a son. The people in this town knew. Poor boy. As I heard it, Jerry Lee's mother died when he was born. Dutch Talbot brought him here to live. To be raised by his brother, Doc. Dutch always came back to see Jerry Lee about once a month. So the law stamped him as a wanted man. But why, why would he think that you were responsible for his son's death? Well, I was taught that a teacher shouldn't love one child more than another. That she should show them all equal consideration. But we can't always live by the book, can we, Mr. Paladin? No, I guess not. I loved Jerry Lee. He was eight years old. I loved him more than any of the other children. I wanted him to have every opportunity available. I wanted him to be the best pupil, the most accomplished, as if he were my very own. That was my under... Who, who? Uh, Mr. Uh, 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 <laughs> Why are you blocking this road? We've been waiting for you. Throw down the gun, mister. Throw it down. What do you want with it? Keep your rifle on him, Trump. Sure. Now get down, mister. And mount that horse you have tied in back. I'll drive the buggy. Who are you? Why are you stopping us? You wouldn't be Dutch Talbot by any chance. No chance about it. Now get down. So, what are you going to do? Never mind what I'm going to do. You get on that horse. Move! Hmm. All right. Trump, keep him covered. Yeah. Take the back way to Dawson. We'll be right behind you. Me and Lena Countryman. the buggy in the barn. All right, then. Now you head for that door. All right, go on in. Doc? Hey, Doc. I say right up, Doc. Hello, Miss Lena. Mr. Calvin, what's the meaning of this? Dutch has all the answers. Who's he? 
Oh, this is Mr. Pelliner. A friend of my father's from San Francisco. What's she doing here? Her father sent me to take her home. He knows that she's been threatened. So do the law officers in this town. Well, that's why I've been careful to stay out of their way. Everything has worked just fine so far. Except for the fact you had to be along the same day we'd planned to take her. What are you going to do with him, Doug? Uh, I haven't made up my mind yet. And what do you intend to do with Miss Countryman? You got the rope ready, Doc? It's in the room, like you told me. We'll bring some extra for him. There's enough for both. I'll need your help. Come on. All right. Into that room. Sit in this chair, mister. You tie him up good, Doc. Sit there, Miss Lena. On the bunk bed. Your turn is next. You don't have to tie me up to kill me. Oh, I'm not going to kill you with this rifle. I got something prettier planned for you. A nice, clean death. Just like the one you gave Jerry Lee. His death was an accident. And you caused that accident. You caused my son's death. You've got no right to go on living when he's laying out there under the ground. Why are you torturing her? Shut up. It's got nothing to do with you. If she says it was an accident, you know it was. And it doesn't make any sense you want to kill her. You get me riled, mister. I'll blow the top off your Mr. head. Mr. Paladin, can't you see it's no use? Yeah, he's finished, Doc. Good work, Doc. Now, huh? Not yet. You know whose room this is, Miss Lena? You know whose bunk you're sitting on? Yes. Jerry Lee's. He'll never see this room again. He'll never wear that jacket hanging on the door. Never again. Those pants laying on that trunk were the ones he wore when they pulled him out of the river. I tried to save him, but it was too late. You should have learned him how to save himself when he was learning them how to swim. He was a good swimmer, the best in school. Then how come he had to drown if he was such a good swimmer? I don't know. He went out too far. He got cramps or something. I don't know. You had no right teaching them kids how to swim. It was for their own protection. The town is surrounded by water. It's important that they know how to swim. They didn't have to be learned by no teacher before you came along. There were many deaths from drowning. And there'll be more unless they get proper training. You and your newfangled notion. I don't care what you think, Dr. Talbot. I love Jerry Lee. He's the last person in the world I bring harm to. You had no right to love him. He wasn't yours. Somebody had to love him. Somebody did, you fool woman. He was my son. And Doc here, he took good interest in him. He didn't need your help. Why, you rode the country, ruining his name. Shut up. You leave her alone, Dutch. You keep out of this, mister. I've warned you enough. Tie her up, Doc. We'll take her when it gets dark. The people in this town will be mighty grateful to me when they drag her out of the river. Although North Carolina is famous for its tobacco and textiles, it is well known for many other products, too. In fact, one of the most important producing areas is just adjacent to Highway 87. 55 miles south of Raleigh and 14 miles northwest of Fayetteville. If you have ever traveled in this vicinity, you should recognize the product immediately. Perhaps the name Fort Bragg might help you. This is a training camp for the 3rd Army's 82nd Airborne Division, and its product is combat readied men. This installation was named for Braxton Bragg, who played a significant part in the Civil War as a Confederate general. He was born in Warren County, North Carolina, in 1817 and was a graduate of West Point with a distinguished record from the Seminole and Mexican Wars. Bragg was named Brigadier General with the Confederacy in 1861. Unfortunately, Bragg's generalship began with a stroke of bad luck. He had practically defeated General Buell at Perryville when Union reinforcements compelled him to abandon his wounded and a large part of the spoils. This brought him into disfavor with his fellow officers and men. In fact, it was only through the personal favor of Jefferson Davis, president of the Confederacy, 
that Bragg was kept at the head of the Central Army and subsequently able to inflict a crushing defeat on Rosecrans at Chickamauga in September 1863. Then, two months later, came the famous Battle Above the Clouds at Lookout Mount in Tennessee. This was another defeat for General Bragg since Union troops under Grant, Sherman, and Thomas drove Bragg's men from their strong positions defending Chattanooga. This defeat caused Bragg to lose his command. But again, Jefferson Davis gave Bragg his support and kept him as a military advisor. Later, Davis appointed Bragg to head the Army of North Carolina. Then in February of 1865, when the Confederate Army had reached its breaking point, General Bragg joined Johnston in a last effort to stop Sherman's march. As a result, Bragg was included in the surrender to Sherman. Bragg's contemporaries described him as a strict disciplinarian who rarely got along with his senior officers. It was this friction that handicapped the conduct of his operations. Nevertheless, when looking over Bragg's military career, one must admit that he was a brave and skillful officer. In fact, soldiers like Braxton Bragg serve as a reminder that America has always produced great military men and will continue to do so as long as the American way of life is preserved. They left us in the room, and for the next few hours, Lena Countryman sat there tied hand and foot without saying a word. Her eyes were filled with tears as she glanced at all the reminders of Jerry Lee. She seemed to suffer more from the memory of the boy than from the thoughts of going to her own death. When Dutch and Trump came to carry her out, she only said, Be gentle to my father. A few minutes later, I heard them ride away. Hey. Hey. Wait. No. No, you're trying to free yourself, Mr. Paladin. Those knots will hold you till I cut you loose. Yeah, and when will that be? Well, it's up to Dutch. And what do you say, Mr. Talbot? What makes you think I'd go against my own brother? Because you don't agree with what your brother thinks. Why do you say that? I saw your face this afternoon when he was racking her with his remarks. You felt sorry for Lena Countryman. You could be right, but what can I do about it? Cut me loose. Dutch would kill me. I suppose he would, wouldn't he? You couldn't help her now. I could try. All right. Thanks. Where would they be? They're stretching the river by the schoolhouse. Same place that happened to Jerry and Lee. All right, I'll need a gun. There's one in the front room. Put the girl down, Trump. You stay back. I'll kill you if you try to stop it. Make your play, Dutch. I'm coming in. Sorry, Trump. Sorry. Don't you do it, Trump. I'm told you to pay back. Time. No, you won't. <laughs> Lena. <laughs> Lena. <laughs> Lena. <laughs> All right. Come on now. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now. Yeah. Now, let me get this gag untied. There we are. Uh, I don't, I'd already made up my mind. I was going to die. Uh, I had my breath on the water after I knew you were here. I'll have to get a knife to cut the rope. I think Dutch has one of them. Yes. 
And I have you to thank for it. Can I possibly tell you how grateful I am? No. Don't try. Why do there have to be men like Dutch Talbot? I don't know. But I'm afraid there'll always be a lot of Dutch Talbots. And not enough leaner countrymen. So, Lena, you just keep right on teaching those kids to grow up to be better men and women. I'll try, Mr. Paladin. I'll try. in Hollywood by Frank Parrott and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Mr. Parrott. Featured in the cast were Russell Arms, Harry Bartell, Charles Lung, and Gene Bates. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. facilities of the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.